Hey, it's Josiah Novak, and welcome to the True Transformation Podcast, the top fitness podcast for men who want to get ripped, naturally boost testosterone levels, and use fitness as a tool to not only look and feel better, but improve all areas of life in the process. Welcome to the show. Buckle up. Life moves fast. Let's make it count. Okay, so today I want to talk about how to train for the DECA Fit race. This is a spinoff from Spartan. If you follow me on social, you'll see that I've been putting in a lot of training for this race over the past couple months. I have done versions of the DECA Fit, including the DECA Mile and the DECA Strong. And now I'm jumping into my first ever DECA Fit race. And these hybrid races have really taken off over the past few years. Spartan really got people off the couch and got them out of their comfort zone, including myself, and really put your fitness to the test. And I know that over the past five plus years, I've truly fallen in love with these fitness events. Everything from the short Spartan races to the High Rocks event and everything in between. And this will be the first deck of fit. I'm doing the one in Chicago the last weekend here in July, 2022. So I want to talk to you about how to train for this race. And if you're interested in jumping into these hybrid fitness challenges, this is a really cool way to test out your fitness level. First thing I'll tell you is that the deck of fit is definitely one of the ones I would probably start with. There's the high rocks, which is a longer race. The true eight, which is my race is a great place to start. We'll have another one probably towards the end of this year and hopefully a few times a year moving forward. And the deck of fit though is a really good place to jump in because in my opinion, it's one of the safer hybrid races. The standard Spartans are awesome too, but they require a lot more strength in areas that you may not have the strength just yet. And you'll need to actually like train really hard for it. And at the same time, I tell you, DecaFit is indoors, so you don't have to worry about the weather. And there's some pretty cool locations where they host these things, all right? So what is the DecaFit? Let's just start with that real quick. I'm going to run through what it is. It's 10 stations, and it starts with a run, a 500-meter run. And then in between each station, there's a run. There's a 500-meter run every time you complete one of these stations. So the first station is a reverse lunge with a weight on your back. They call it a ram. It's just a uh, recycled tire that has been turned into this like logs shape weight. Then you're going to run again. Then you'll jump into zone two, which is a 500 meter row. Zone three is a 24 inch box jump or step over. Zone four is a medicine ball sit up. You got to do 25 medicine ball sit ups with a 20 pound weight. If you're a guy, 14 pound weight, if you're a woman, And then you'll jump into zone five, 500 meter ski erg. Okay. This is halfway through the race. Keep in mind, you're running 500 meters in between each one of these stations. Ski erg is becoming more popular for showing up in different gyms. It used to be a piece of equipment that was really hard to find, or you'd only probably find it at a CrossFit gym, but now you'll find it in a lot of standard gyms around the country. Zone six is a hundred meter farmer's carry. You got to carry 60 pounds if you're a guy, 40 if you're a woman. And then zone seven is 25 calories burned on the air bike. This is one of the worst pieces of equipment. If you're not into cardio, this one will definitely wake you up. But anyway, zone eight, you're almost there is dead ball shoulder overs. Basically you're taking, it's, it's a wall over. So there's a wall set up. You got to pick up a heavy ball. In this case, 60 pounds for men, 40 pounds for women. And you got to hoist it over the wall. It's a four foot wall. And then you run, jump into zone nine, which is a hundred meter tank push pool. So you'll push a, basically a sled, but it's a tank because it's on wheels with resistance and you'll push it 10 meters, pull it 10 meters, push it 10 meters, pull it 10 meters. You basically got to do that five times. Okay. Push, pull five times. Then final zone is burpees using the same piece of equipment you did lunges with, which is the Ram you got to do 20 burpees and you don't have to run at the end, which is nice. You just cross the finish line after the burpees are done. That is the DECA fit race. The first is getting your body used to running more, being on your feet at a higher cadence and basically bouncing from one leg to the next, which is running and getting used to being out running more. Okay. So putting more mileage on your legs. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I made back when I started training for these type of races was 
two, two major mistakes. One was running too far too soon, right? So just basically running as far as I could out of the gate. The second mistake was running as fast as I could. When really you want to do the opposite of those two things. You want to start with, heck, go run a half a mile at a very slow clip. Like literally at a clip where you can hold a conversation while you're running. Now, if you're a little more seasoned and you've run and you have some endurance already, then you can start with, you know, low mileage or just pick time. So instead of running for miles, you say, okay, I'm going to run at a very slow clip for 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And most of the running you're going to do is going to be at a lower intensity as you prepare for the deck of fit. And let's just say you have 12 weeks to prepare. That will give you plenty of time to start building up your tolerance to running. Okay. Running is not something that most people are conditioned to do. So you're going to have to slowly build up your mileage, slowly build up your body's ability to handle more running, both from a breathing and oxygen efficiency standpoint, and from a standpoint of the wear and tear that comes from running. People get hurt running because they jump into running long distance out of the gate. They jump into running really fast out of the gate and the body just can't handle that. You're not training your aerobic capacity, right? Your body's ability to basically funnel oxygen to your muscles at an efficient rate so that you don't get tired out, worn out, and your heart rate doesn't skyrocket as you're running, which obviously will slow you down. You won't be able to sustain super high heart rates throughout these runs if you're not trained for it. So most of my training, so I would say three days a week was highly focused on running. There was two really low intensity runs per week that started out with, you know, a couple miles each time and then slowly built up to running like 45 minutes, which got me about five miles twice a week. Okay. And then I had one more high intensity run which was designed to push me to a higher heart rate, which is basically sprints, doing either 200-meter sprints, 400-meter sprints, and then 500-meter sprints, followed by some recovery time, and then hopping back on and doing another sprint. And we build up the quantity of sprints over the course of 12 weeks. So you start with three or four, then you build to like six, eight, blah, blah, blah. And then there was a couple of workouts a week where we did strength training, okay? So strengthening your body, specifically muscles you're going to be using like your glutes, your back, your grip strength, your quads, your ability to handle some punishment during this race. So two to three focus strength sessions. Sometimes there'd be some overlap, right? So you do strength and then followed by a short run. And then what we start to do as we build this training program is as we get towards like the end of the first few weeks, then you want to start really dialing in your ability to handle running and the stations that you're doing inside a deck of fit. So some of these runs, we, you know, especially the high intensity day, we would do a sprint and then you would hop off the treadmill or wherever you're running and you do like the box step overs or you do the crunches or you do the skier. And then over time, we'd start to replace some of these runs with doing the actual machines themselves that we'd be doing in the race, like the row machine, the ski machine, the bike, okay? And then you start to do some of these like hybrid days where you'd run for 15 minutes, then you do the ski for 15 minutes. And over time, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to build our endurance, not just with running, but with all the events that we'll be doing inside of the race, right? So being able to hop off the bike and run, being able to go from a run to a sled push and pull, from a run to a farmer's carry, from a run to crunches, and then back to the run. Some of the workouts I did towards the tail end of my training was picking the hardest events that are in the deck of fit, which in my opinion is the bike, the ski erg, and the row. Those are the ones that really take a lot out of you because you're going from a run to another heavy endurance-focused exercise. And what we do is we would run 500 meters at a race pace, just like the event. And then you'd hop onto the row machine, do 500 meters at a race pace, hop back into a run, take a rest for like two minutes, then do the run again, back to the row, back to the run. And then we would cycle through basically back to back stations of the same thing to get your body to really just learn how to recover. The body's heart rate's going to come up a bit, 
But if you can recover, especially during your run, if you can get your run to be the time where you get your breath back, you get your wind back a bit, you get refocused and you get ready for the next station while still maintaining a good pace, that's where you're going to excel. Okay. Now, if this seems really complicated, it's not something that everyone's going to be ready to do, but you can start to build your endurance, even with small amounts of the style of training. Okay. The thing I like about these hybrid races, especially the DecaFit, the True 8 that I host, and even High Rocks. I mean, High Rocks is more advanced because the runs are longer. In fact, I think they're almost three times as long, at least twice as long. And the events, the actual stations are a little more challenging. The thing I like though is the chance of injury is very low. Okay. If we're looking at the deck of fit, for example, and I'd be thinking, okay, where would someone who isn't necessarily 100% prepared but wants to jump into it because they want the challenge, where would you have a risk of getting hurt? Besides the run, you know, if you ran slow and just kept the pace that was sustainable, what, which one of the stations where you'd be, where, where would you be likely to get hurt? And honestly, None of them besides maybe the box step over, right? If you're trying to jump up off the box and jump off, which is not the form and the technique that I recommend, I recommend the step over where you're literally just stepping up, stepping off, stepping up, stepping off. The chance of injury is pretty low. Even the farmers carry, you're carrying a heavy weight, but you can drop the weight you're allowed to drop the weight and stop and pick it back up and keep going. There's the sled push and pull. One of the, honestly, one of the most low impact forms of cardio you can do really good for your knees. That's what I love about these events. Like the way I made the true eight and I'll do a whole separate video on the true eight soon, but I made true eight thinking, how could someone go from the couch to competition without any training, really short run. They only run a total of a mile, but like the deck of it's only 3.1 miles. So it's not like you're running 20 miles, like a marathon or even a half marathon. So let's just say inside of our program, where would I recommend our clients jump into something like this, I would say, first and foremost, we have a phase that we call the Spartan phase where you've gotten in better shape. You've lost some of the weight, a lot of the weight, actually. Your body's in much healthier state. Your joints feel better. Everything feels more conditioned and you look great. So you're not trying to lose weight while you're doing this. You're trying to maintain weight, trying to eat more to fuel. You take the focus off of aesthetics exclusively. And you jump into something like this, which is, it's a ton of fun, right? It's just, it's a blast. So that is DECA fit. Wanted to just explain how I would say, or my training in New York, I'll be doing a Spartan beast at the end of August in West Virginia. And then if all goes as planned, I'll be doing the DECA fit world championships in November in Atlantic city. Those are my next races that I have planned. I'll also be doing super Spartan at the end of October. So it, it, there's a lot of fun stuff coming up and I'm excited to track all this stuff for you and, and show you we'll move into you know more of a maintenance season, staying healthy, staying strong, rehabilitate anything that was sore or slightly hurt or whatnot. And then uh, gear up again for the spring where we slim down a little bit and we get ready for race season again. So if you need me know, I will uh, talk to you on the next one. Thanks for listening to the True Transformation Podcast. Make sure to subscribe and leave us um, a review. A review. Come back next time.